Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Friday, May 29th, 2020. Today, I want to discuss the unfortunate tragedy of George Floyd because I had not addressed it on the show. Um, recap yesterday's NASCAR race and pick the winner for the Bristol race on Sunday. Look back on this morning's KBO games like ahead to the weekends. Recap last night's episodes of Celebrity Watch Party and Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. My 2013 NHL redraft and my 2015 top 10 albums. First, I want to um, talk about the unfortunate tragedy to uh, George Floyd. Um, they finally um, arrested the um, the murderer of George Floyd. They, that should have been done sooner than this. Um, it's just disgusting. And I feel for George Floyd and his family. They did not deserve this at all and um it's just a sick world that we are living in like none of this should be happening period at all especially right now in the middle of this coronavirus pandemic that we are currently stuck in right now um so they finally arrested that police or former police officer today and then in response to um, the murder people set the police station in Minneapolis on fire in response to the murderer, which I think is a little outlandish too, because, um, I know it's just like the instant reaction, but I still feel that that was wrong. But this is the stuff that happens when tragedies happen. There's protests and people wanting things their way and, like I said, it's just a sick world that things like this are being taken place. And I'm just glad that um, the right thing was finally done today with the uh, the murderer getting sent to prison. It doesn't say how long he'll be in prison for. It should be a very long time if, um, if so. And, um, yeah, I just wanted to uh, talk about this because I didn't have time to talk about it on the show's the last couple of days, so I wanted to uh, get that out of the way and share my uh, thoughts and prayers to uh, George Floyd's family and his friends and the city of Minneapolis because Minneapolis is a great city and they don't deserve things like this and neither does any city, quite frankly. Now I'm going to talk about the latest uh, coronavirus stuff. Um, so baseball as I keep mentioning, is in trouble. Um, the players are supposed to um, come out with their response offer from the disastrous um, offer that the owners came out with with the big pay cuts. So um, that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Um, the NCAA released a plan to help schools bring athletes back to campus during the pandemic. Um it does look like we're going to have college football and college basketball start on time this year. It really does look like it's heading in that direction. So more and more schools are keep on opening and saying that they plan on having in-person courses in the fall. So that is pretty good. Um, NBA GM survey resulted revealed, and um, the Ringer reported Kevin O'Connor said that uh, – the return to play formats group revealed 75% voted for play in games and 25% voted for group stage. It should be interesting to see um, where they end up going. I don't mind the play in games because I think if they do do the play in games, there's going to be more teams involved. Kind of like the uh, the hockey one a little bit, with except hockey's obviously doing like a best of five series for those um, qualifying round tournaments as they are calling it. Um, Power 5 commissioners ask the Congress to set laws enabling student-athletes to profit off their name, images, and likeness. Um, that was on my uh, notifications list, so that's some interesting news. Um, MLB Draft. Um, I think this is pretty neat. Um, it's going to be airing on multiple networks for the first time ever. ESPN will carry the first round and the first compensation round or the compensatory round or whatever. 
on Wednesday, June 10th, and then rounds two through five will be aired on June 11th on ESPN2, and MLB Network is obviously airing both days of the draft. So I thought this um, was predictable that ESPN was going to have their draft coverage this year because of the pandemic, and they saw how good their ratings were for the virtual draft for the NFL, and their WNBA draft ratings were a high forever. I think that the baseball draft ratings are going to be as high as ever as well. Now I want to talk about um, last night's NASCAR race. The winner of the race wound up being Chase Elliott. He redeemed himself after a um, costly finish to the Charlotte race on Sunday. And he bounces back and wins the Alsco Uniforms 500. Denny Hamlin came in second place. Ryan Blaney third. Ricky Stiles Jr. fourth. Kurt Busch fifth. Joey Logano fifth. Brad Kozlowski seventh. Austin Dillon eighth. Martin Truex Jr. ninth. Kevin Harvick tenth. Kevin Harvick, by the way, led a lot of the race and he just fell apart. We have not seen anything like this from Kevin Harvick um, this year. And especially since um, the restart of the season. So that's disappointing for him. Jimmy Johnson, 11th. That was my pick. William Byron, who got the pole, came in 12th. Joe or John Nemechek came in 13th. Tyler Riddick, 14th. Matt DiVinetto, 15th. Clint Boyer, 16th. Ryan Newman, 17th. Cole Custer, 18th. Um, LaJoy came in 19th. That's a good finish for him. Um, Eric Amarola, 20th. Any other notables? Um, Chris Boucher, 22nd. Matt Kenseth, 23rd. Michael McDowell, 25th. He actually started in the top four. Eric Jones, 26th. Ty Dillon, 27th. Um, Kyle Busch, 29th. So not a good race for him. He was down multiple laps. Alec Bowman had the lead for a while in stage one and stage two. He fell apart because um, I believe he had a tire issue and he had to go to pit road. That cost him pretty much. Um, Bubba Wallace, 37th. He had a good race and then um, he... um, he had a caution, so um, that set him back. But otherwise, I thought that Baba Wallace had a solid race for himself. It's just unfortunate how it ended up finishing for him. All right, the starting lineup for Bristol on Sunday, 3.30 on Fox Sports 1. In the poll, the lucky winner of the draw, Brad Kozlowski. Eric Amarola will start aside him. Second row, third and fourth, Joey Legato, Ryan Blaney. Um, fifth and sixth is Truex Jr. and Elliott, so that's row three. Row four, seventh and eighth place, you have Kyle Busch and Kevin Arvick. In the fifth row and ninth and tenth, Matt DiBonetto, Denny Hamlin. Eleventh, Alec Bowman. Twelfth, Kurt Busch. Thirteenth, William Byron. Fourteenth, Matt Kenseth. Fifteenth, Eric Jones. Sixteenth, Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Eighteenth, or seventeenth, Ryan Newman. Eighteenth, John Hunter Nemechek. Nineteenth, Chris Buescher. Twentieth, Austin Dillon. Any other notables? Um... 21st, Tyler Reddick, 22nd, Cole Custer, 23rd, Clint Boyer, 24th, Jimmy Johnson, 25th, Michael McDowell, 29th, Ty Dillon, um, 32nd, Corey LaJoy after um, a 19th place finish in Charlotte, so that's a little unlucky for him, Chris Bell, 35th, Bubba Wallace, 36th, so um, in terms of a pick for the race, I was torn between two guys, and the guy I chose is somebody that had a great finish to the race last night. He has a good history at Bristol, and that is the number 11 driver in the FedEx card, Denny Hamlin. He's 8-1 to one right now on DraftKings. Um, I think he should be more like a, the favorite in this race. Um, I think that there's some guys that are overvalued for this track. Um, but 8-1 to one for Denny Hamlin I think is a good number. I think it should be like 6-1, to one, maybe plus 550. He has very good history at Bristol. Um, the funny thing is that he was 13-1 to one to win Charlotte, and that's not one of his strongest suits, and he came in second in Charlotte. I think that he's trending up right now, and um, he wound up getting lucky in the sh- – in the uh, Rainshorn race at Darlington. Um, so I think he's going to um, win this race on Sunday at Bristol. And it's one of his best 
um, places to drive. I thought about picking Kurt Busch. He has a really good history at Bristol. He's won a lot of races there in the past. But um, like I did for the truck race, I almost went with Kyle Busch, but then I decided to go with Chase Elliott. That worked out. So hopefully second time's a charm here when I almost go with Kurt Busch, but I do wind up going with Denny Hamlin for the official pick, and the official pick winds up being the winner. So Denny Hamlin, 8-1. to one. I think that is a really solid pick for one of the better NASCAR drivers we have right now. So let's go with Denny Hamlin to win at Bristol on Sunday afternoon. Now I'm going to go over this morning's KBO games and look ahead to the games for the weekend. So without further ado... Here we go. Kaiwum over KT, 5-1. LG over Kia, 6-2. Dusan over Latte, 4-2. Samsung over NC, 5-4. So the Dinos suffer over a loss. And SK over Hanwha, 8-6. So SK gets a rare win. All right, so tomorrow, um, there's a couple matinee games out there in Korea. And then the rest of them are night games. Um, LG, Kia, KT, Kaiwum, Hanwha, SK, NC, Samsung, Latte, Dusan. Um, the same matchups are for Sunday as well and those Sunday games are all matinee games um the standings as of right now um the Dinos are 17 and 4 LG's 5, 15 and 6 Doosan 13 and 8 Kia and Kaiwum are 11 and 11 Latte's 10 and 11 KT 9 and 12 Samsung 9 and 13 Hanwha 7 and 15 SK 5 and 16 so LG is sneaking up on the Dinos here a little bit. So keep an eye on them. They are playing Kia um, these next two days. And Kia is a 500 team. So keep an eye out for LG here. If, if they could potentially sneak up on the Dinos. Who um, lost to Samsung. Who's 9-13. and 13. My red bank on the Dinos bouncing back though. Um, but I'm just throwing it out there. Keep an eye out for LG. They're starting to round into a little bit of a form here. Now I'm going to recap last night's episode of Celebrity Watch Party. All your usual suspects are on there, like the Buck family, the Osbournes. Um, you have um, Rob Lowe in there as well. Um, Jody Sweden and Andrea Barber of Full and Fuller House made appearances, so that's cool. Jojo Siwa... Um, Romeo Master P, Tyra Banks, and her mom, Steve Wozniak, and his wife, Reggie and Lilith Bush, talked about the Osbournes, Raven, Simone, and Friends, and Curtis Stone and Lindsay Price. Um, the shows and segments watched included America's Got Talent, Celebrity Family Feud, I did call it with the game show's reactions being on this show, and obviously they're probably... We're watching the rerun that was on on Sunday on ABC. Cuomo Prime Times. Chris Cuomo interviewing his brother Andrew Cuomo. So that's interesting. Titanic. Um, 90 Day Fiance before the 90 Days. Shark Tank and Labor of Love. So fun episode. Like I said, your usual suspects like the Bucks and the Osbournes, Raven Simone, Wozniak, Tyra Banks, etc. But, um... Jody Sweden and Andrea Barber, that's fun. And I think that's really neat that they got um, the Full House stars on the show. So um, good job on Fox there. Now I want to recap um, last night's episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Two contestants went. It was a fun episode. Um, first, they um, continued Lauren Lapkus, who played for Kranz and Kalidas. Pilatus Foundation. Her help was Mike Castle. Um, she did very well. She made it all the way up to the a million dollar question. So this is the first time somebody made it to the million dollar question on Jimmy Kimmel's version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire. But what does she do? She walks away with 500000 because she was stumped on the question. And I believe the question had to do if I'm not mistaken, with the periodic table and what a certain letter meant. And she didn't know what it meant. Or no, that wasn't one of the questions. I think that was the $500,000 question. But 
or was it that? I know there was one with the president's names and the most president's names, and she used her phone a friend with her father, and the answer turned out to be James, the most um, first names of the U.S. presidents. So um, that was one of the big-time questions on there. So I guess it was the periodic table and what um, a certain uh, letter meant. So that was the million-dollar question. And then she would have guessed something and she would have been wrong and she would have had to drop all the way to 32000 That would, would have been unfortunate. So she made the right decision in walking away with five hundred grand for her charity of Kranz and Colatus. Anderson Cooper was the second person in the hot seat. He brings Andy Cohen for his help. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Andy Cohen was on the show. So... That's interesting, if I'm not mistaken. I believe Andy Cohen was on on the show, or is going to be on the show. So I thought that was ironic. Um, his charity that he's playing for is the Spikes K-9 Fund. Um, he made it, if I'm not mistaken, to the $4,000 question. When the buzzer sounded, he got that one right. And then um, the final horn sounded, so he'll be continuing on next week in what is going to be the last episode of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire for Jimmy Kimmel's first season. Now I'm going to do my 2013 NHL redraft. This was an interesting one to put together. Um... There's some stars in there, some up-and-coming stars, a lot of busts. So, without further ado, here we go. The Colorado Avalanche, number one, go with Nathan McKinnon. No doubt about it. The best player from this draft. Hard trophy candidate, year in and year out. I think one of the more underrated superstars in the game, overshadowed by the likes of Connor McDavid and Alex Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby. But this kid is special, and he's going to be around for a very, very long time. And obviously, uh, they took McKinnon with that pick. The Panthers at number two go with Seth Jones. So Seth Jones, um, I think, is easily the best defenseman from this draft. Um, unfortunate for him this year because he was injured. But luckily for him, um, he'll be back for the postseason. And maybe he'll help Columbus go on an unexpected run or something. But um, Seth Jones drafted by the Predators and traded to Columbus in a lopsided trade which sent Ryan Johansson to Nashville and Jones to Columbus as Columbus landed their franchise D-man. And Nashville got a very good player, but not an elite player in Ryan Johansson. That's why I consider it as such a win for Columbus with uh, Seth Jones. And Seth Jones would probably be the best defenseman on the Predators right now. And he'd certainly be the best defenseman on the Panthers right now. And him and Aaron Eckblad would have been an interesting um, one-two combo there in Florida. Instead, they go with Alexander Barkov, which was a very good pick in their defense. And number three, the Lightning go with Alexander Barkov. Um, Barkov drops a spot to the third pick. Barkov's one of the um, better players in the league. I think is um, a little overshadowed just because he's playing in southern Florida. So I think that... Um, kind of hurts him in the sense of a market value. Unlike Nathan McKinnon, he plays in Denver, which is a uh, a bigger market, which helps him. But Barkov's a very good player. He certainly would have helped the Lightning in those runs and uh, is certainly a better player than the guy they took in this spot, Jonathan Druin. The Predators with the fourth pick go with Jake Gensel. Jake Gensel was stolen by the Penguins in this draft. Stolen. He's a great player. He's going to come back for the Penguins and um, help them um, in uh, their playoff run, however long that is. Jake Kensel is somebody that, if I'm not mistaken, um, was a uh, finalist or winner of the... Um, Conn Smythe Trophy, I think a finalist, but not actually one. I think Crosby won those too. But he certainly helped the Penguins win those back-to-back Stanley Cups. And he's an absolute star, and he'd be the top center on the Predators right now 
And instead they go with um, Seth Jones, who I talked about earlier. The Hurricanes at number five go with Elias Lindholm. So no do over here for the Kansas. They take their guy Lindholm, who they eventually traded to the Flames, along with Noah Hannafin to acquire Dougie Hamilton. And that is one of the more um, controversial trades because I think Calgary wins that deal. Although Hamilton's a great player, don't get me wrong. But I think that Lindholm and um, Hannafin are going to be really good for Calgary for years to come. And it's like a what-if moment, in my opinion, over the last couple years as the Hurricanes are obviously now an up-and-coming team in the Eastern Conference. The Calgary Flames in number six go with Shea Theodore. Boy, Shea Theodore on that defense with Mark Giordano and um, Noah Hannafin would have been something. Theodore really has come into his own with the Vegas Golden Knights. He was having his best year yet with the Golden Knights before the season got on pause. And... He's going to be one of the top defensemen on the Golden Knights for years to come. And he certainly would have been a great fit in Calgary and certainly would have made them a better looking team. Instead, they went with Sean Monahan. The Oilers at number seven go with Bo Horvat. Um, tough call here. These next couple players you could argue should have been the Oilers spot in this redraft. Or you could make a case Horvat to go to the Flames and the Oilers go with the defenseman. But... Theodore on the Flames would have been a great what if there. Um, Horvat, obviously, um, the Devils initially had that pick and then the Canucks flipped it in the Corey Schneider deal or got it in the Corey Schneider deal, and which looks like a win for the Canucks right now because Corey Schneider did not pan out in New Jersey. And it could very well be a cut casualty after the season. Um, but Bo Horvat on Edmonton um, probably would be the number two or number three center behind Connor McDavid and um, Leon Dreisaitl, unless they would put um, Dreisaitl on the wing and then Horvat could be their number two guy. Or maybe they trade Bo Horvat for an established defenseman. Instead, the Oilers went with Darnell Nurse. The Buffalo Sabres at number eight go with Rasmus Ristolainen. No do over here if the Sabres get their guy in Ristolainen. Um... He's a very good player, and him and Rasmus Dahlin are going to be a good one-two punch for them for years to come. Number nine, the Canucks go with Andre Burakovsky. Like I said, this group of players is debatable um, that I'm currently in between picks um, six and arguably all the way down to 17 are debatable. Because um, this draft is very good in terms of solid players. We already did the stars in the top five. But um, like I said, the, these those numbers I said between pick seven or six and 17, I think, are debatable in what order they should go. But um, Borovkovsky, someone that was having his best year yet with the Avalanche, um, the Caps can come to regret this one down the road. Um, very good player for um, three abs. And Borovkovsky on the Canucks would have probably been a middle lineman. Um, instead, uh, the Canucks go with Bo Horvat, who I talked about earlier. The Stars at number 10 go with Ryan Polak. Polak really has emerged as an underrated defenseman in the league, um, being on the top pairing for the Islanders. Um, I don't think this guy gets enough credit. And he's really somebody that is the perfect player for Barry Trotz as well. And could you imagine him, John Klingberg, and um, Miro Hiskinen on that defense there in Dallas? Instead, they go with Valeri Nishushkin. The Flyers at number 11 go with Max Domi. Um, Max Domi is somebody that um, had people had high hopes for him in Arizona, didn't really pan out, so they traded him to um, the Canadians. He had a great year on the Canadians last year, took a step back this year, so Max Domi is an interesting case on um, what he really is, but I'm but in this redraft, let's say the Flyers are banking on upside here, and um, he could be like a nice um, second or third line center or wing for them. Instead, they go with Samuel Maureen. 
But Coyotes at 12 go with um, Josh Morrissey. So with Max Domi off the board, they take the defenseman of Morrissey. Um, Morrissey has come into his own with the Jets. Um, this year is his best year. Um, he's somebody that uh, him and um, Olivier ekman Larson would have been an interesting one too in uh, Arizona. Instead, like I said, they go with Max Domi. Um, the Jets at 13 go with Oliver Jorkstan um, with Marcy off the board. Um, they go with Jorkstan, who um, was in the midst of a career year before he got injured with the Blue Jackets this year. Um, Jorkstan would have been interesting on Winnipeg. Uh, maybe they use him as trade bait. Maybe they use him as their number two center. Um, but, yeah, that's a loaded offensive team. So they would have had some options here if Jorkstan instead – Winnipeg went with Josh Morrissey, who I already discussed. The Blue Jackets at 14 go with Pavel Buchnevich. Pavel Buchnevich is somebody that um, had high hopes um, as he was um, coming into the league with the Rangers. This season was his very best season of his career. Um, looks like that Buchnevich is a late bloomer, and he's finally emerging into the player the Rangers think he is. And um, he would have been interesting on Columbus. Maybe he would be a top six guy for them on that team. Instead, they go with Alexander Wenberg. The Islanders at 15 go with Anthony Mantha. So, um, at the time, they had John Tavares, and they had a different-looking team at the time. Some of the guys that are still there, like Brock Nelson, Josh Bailey. But Anthony Mantha on that team with that group would have been interesting, and um, he'd be a top-six guy on the Islanders right now. Instead, they go with Ryan Pollock, who turned out to be a great player for them, or who is still a great player for them. Um, the Sabres at 16 go with Tyler Bertuzzi. Um, Bertuzzi was having a great year at the Red Wings this year before the stoppage. Um, obviously, um, you could argue that, um, good stats, bad team guy. And the same for Anthony Mantha, too. But both those guys are having good years at the Red Wings. Um, instead, the Sabres went with, um, Nikita Zadorov. The Senators at 17 go with Darnell Nurse, so they take the young defenseman there. And him and Thomas Chabot would have been an interesting pairing for Ottawa. But, and it may be him and Nurse and Eric Carlson with those first couple of seasons. So there's some what-ifs there. Um, Nurse is somebody that is a solid defenseman for the Oilers. I still think that he has room to grow as a player. Instead, Ottawa went with Curtis Lazar. The Sharks 18 go with Sean Monahan, so Monahan falls from 6 to 18. Monahan is somebody that I don't think has lived up to expectations with the Flames, but is somebody that has shown signs of potential throughout his career. Him on San Jose would have been interesting, probably a third line center there. Instead, they go with um, Mirko Muller. The Blue Jackets at 19 go with Dominic Kubalak. Kubalak. Is this low? Because I'm not that sold on him. He had a career year with the Blackhawks this past year. Um, I need to see him do it again and show some signs in the playoffs. Um, him on Columbus would have been interesting, though. And the whole of him and Pavel Buchnevich from this draft would have been interesting for that franchise. Instead, they go with um, Kirby Reichel. Number 20, the Red Wings go with Tristan Jarry. Um... Tristan Jarry had a career year at the Penguins this year. He's among that group of up-and-coming goalies from the Metro Division, along with um, Igor Shesterkin, um, Carter Hart, Mackenzie Blackwood, Elvis Merklins, among others. Um, Jarry made the All-Star team this year. Um, he certainly would be the starting goalie of the Red Wings right now. And instead, the Red Wings went with Anthony Mantha, who I talked about earlier. The Maple Leafs of 21 go with Zach Sanford. Zach Sanford was somebody that was shipped to the Blues in a trade, and um, he's turned out to be a solid player for them, and he would have been a nice depth player for the Maple Leafs. Instead, the Leafs go with um, Frederick Gauthier. The Flames at 22 go with Anthony DeClaire. Anthony DeClaire was in the midst of his best year of his career this year with the Senators. He was drafted by the Rangers. Rangers trade him away in the Keith Handel deal. A lot of people thought that they overpaid at the time, but declared turned out to be a disappointment with Arizona. Traded to Chicago, then traded to Ottawa, and he looks like he found the home there in Ottawa. And then, who knows, maybe Declare would have been a nice um, piece for uh, the Flames. Maybe he would have been a good fit there. 
Instead, Calgary went with um, Emil Poirier. The Capitals at 23 go with Will Butcher. Will Butcher is somebody that um, was traded to the Devils from the Avalanche. Um, really came comes come into his own with the Devils, one of their better defensemen. But another um, good stats, bad team argument with Butcher. But Butcher had a good year in the year that they made the postseason when T- Taylor Hall won the Hart Trophy. So Will Butcher's not bad, and he would have been a nice piece Maybe a top four D guy on the Caps. And instead, uh, they go with Andre Burakovsky, who I talked about earlier. The Canucks at 24 go with Madison Bowie. Bowie was a Capitals draft pick who was traded to the Red Wings. Um, I forget what deal that was. Um, but I did like the haul for the trade at the time because of Bowie. And um, Bowie... Um, was having a nice season for Detroit this year before the uh, the stoppage of play. And he would have been a nice depth defenseman on Vancouver as well. Instead, Vancouver goes with Hunter Shinkarik. The Canadians at 25 go with Jonathan Druin. That's ironic. He's on the Canadians right now. We know the story. Third overall pick by the Lightning. Turned out to be a huge bust. They trade him to Montreal in in my opinion, what was a robbery trade as the Canadians sent over um, uh, the young defenseman, um, Miguel Sergachev, and that turned out to be a mega win for Tampa Bay as they sold high on one of the more disappointing players over the past decade. And Druin did have some nice statistical seasons with the Canadians, but I'm still not sold that he's even as good as the numbers he's put up with Montreal because of how high expectations were when he came into the league. Instead, Montreal went with Michael McCarron. The Ducks of 26 go with JT Comfort. Comfort is a good role player on the Avs. Um, would have been a nice role player on the Ducks as well. Instead, um, Anaheim went with um, Shea Theodore, who I talked about earlier, and Vegas stole him in the expansion draft. The 27th pick was Columbus. They go with Alexander Wenberg. That's ironic. He was their um, other first-round pick. Um, and Or one of their other first-round picks. They had three of them, amazingly. One from the Rick Nash trade and one from the Kings in the um, Jeff Carter trade. So um, Columbus really uh, loaded up on picks in that draft. Um Weinberg is somebody that's a nice role player for them, but um, I think that they had higher hopes for Weinberg personally. Instead, Columbus went with Marco Dano, who turned out to be a huge, huge bust. The Flames at 28 go with Miles Wood. Um, good role player on the Devils. Um, he's somebody that um, has really been a grinder in his career, exceeds expectations. And said the Flames went with um, Morgan Kimmelchuk. The Dallas Stars at 29 go with Ryan Hartman. Ryan Hartman's interesting. Um, he had that career year at the Blackhawks, and they shipped him to Nashville, got a first for him, and uh, really hasn't lived up to expectations since uh, he was traded from Chicago. Um, he probably would have been a fourth liner on the Stars, maybe a third liner. Instead, the Stars went with um, Jason Dickinson, who was an honorable mention and almost was in this redraft. Um, and the Blackhawks at 30 go with Robert Hag, depth defenseman for the Flyers, um, solid player, um, would have been a depth defenseman on the Hawks as well. Instead, the Hawks went with Ryan Hartman, who I just spoke about. And now I'm going to do my 2015 top 10 albums. Um, this was a fun list to put together, um. In honorable mention, um, the Hamilton soundtrack. Um, I really don't do soundtracks on my uh, um, countdowns, but this was a good one, and I had to um, throw it into um, my um, my list. So. Because they had such good um, 
um, songs on that soundtrack. So without further ado, my top 10 albums of 2015. Um, this was a hard list to uh, put together, by the way. Um, in 10th place, I went with um, In Color by Jamie X, um, which was a f interesting album. Good, like, beat music on the album. In ninth place, you have... And by the way, this is going to be interesting because um, this artist is going to have, spoiler alert, two albums um, on the list that both happen to be um, mixtapes. What a Time to Be Alive by Drake. His single Jump Man came out on that album as well. Um, eighth place, Honeymoon, Lana Del Rey, um, Singles Highway by the Beach and Music to Watch Boys 2 album came out in September of 2015. And speaking of Drake, um, if you're reading this, It's Too Late is number seven on the album list. Um, came out in February of 2015. Singles Preach and Energy off that album. In sixth place, Emotion, Carly Rae Jepsen, came out in June of 2015. Singles, I Really Like You, Run Away With Me, and Your Type. In fifth place, Traveler, Chris Stapleton, came out in May of 2015. Singles, Traveler, Nobody to Blame in Parachute. Obviously, Tennessee Whiskey's on this album as well, and that is obviously in my opinion, the best song of the album, although it wasn't a single, which I think um, is really um, unfortunate for uh, Chris's state because, uh, like I said, it was a great song. In fifth place, 25, Adele. Um, great album came out in November of 2015 featuring... Um, singles, Hello, when, were you were, when We Were Young, Send My Love to Your New Lover, and Water Under the Bridge. Third place, Unbreakable, Janet Jackson. Um, an underrated album in my mind, um, came out in 2015, October. Sleep, um, Singles, No Sleep, Burn It Up, Unbreakable, The Great Forever, and Damn Baby. Third place, To Pimp a Butterfly, um, Kendrick Lamar, um, came out in March of 2015, the singles I, um, The Blacker the Berry, King Kanta, All Right, and These Walls. And number one, The Weeknd, The Beauty Behind the Madness, um, a great album by... Um, one of the best singers out there right now came out of August of 2015. Often the hills can't feel my face in the night and acquainted were the singles off that album. That's it for the show today. I'll be back on Monday recapping the weekend's news related to the coronavirus and any other news around the world of sports and pop culture. We'll recap the NASCAR race and we'll pick the winner of the nationwide race. For Monday night, we will also um, go over the weekend's KBO games and look ahead to Tuesday's games. I'll have my 2015 top 10 NFL players and games for you as well. Have a great weekend, everyone.